Hello everyone, this is Lynn Palermo from the Armchair Genealogist and welcome to another one of our videos in our series Scribner for the Family History Writer. The next few videos that I'm going to show you are going to be quick little five to ten minute videos um, that you can watch very quickly and add to your knowledge of Scribner. We're going to try and break it down and take one particular aspect of Scribner and help you to apply that to your knowledge. Today we're going to take a look at the outliner. Now what, be, what you see on the screen at the moment is actually the corkboard. And I understand that maybe the corkboard doesn't appeal to everybody. Some people may prefer to see their manuscript in a more hierarchical format, and that is where the outliner will come into play. So let's take a look at it. If we go simply up here to view and click on outline, we have now taken all that information that we saw before on the cue cards and have translated into an outline format. So if, if you don't like the cue card aspect of it, this is a fantastic way to look at your manuscript, outline it, um, brainstorm it, but doing it in an outline format. So wonderful flexibility that Scrivener offers you. Now, because Scrivener is such a flexible program, we of course can um, customize this outliner um, many different ways. So let's take a look at how we can make this outline uh, more um, in keeping with your own preferences. So first of all, to do that, let me go to view here and in layout, and I'm going to take off the binder and I'm going to take off the inspector for you so you can see the outliner in all its glory. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in here to tools and options. And this is where we get to change sort of the visual um, colors and fonts of the outliner. So click on general and in here you're going to find outliner background and outliner alternate background. So that's what's giving us the uh, different colors here. So if we click on here, let's just change it to a, a different color, something a little bolder. And in the outliner alternative, you get to choose a second color, which makes it more visually appealing and easier to read on the screen. Now, right now, I've got a little um, uh, cream hue, so I'm just going to leave it at that because I think that makes it easier for us to view. Down here in general, you can, an outliner, you can then select your fonts. So I've just chosen a simple Arial in normal, and we've got a 14. Let's just change it to a 12. I want to kind of keep it rather large for you guys to be able to see on the video screen. We'll click OK and we can apply, which gives us an opportunity to see it before you've actually leave the option setting here. So that looks pretty good. So let's leave that. So there we go. We've now changed um, some of the visual appeal of the outliner. Now let's take a look at uh, what we can, um, what we want to see in the outliner in terms of the columns. So there's a couple different ways we can look at this. Um, this is my preference right here is this little drop down menu where it gives you all your options and you can easily click and add what you'd like to include. So we've got title, synopsis, label, status, create date. Uh, you, you certainly can see and read the rest of them. So you just click on or off what you'd like to see. So let's just add synopsis to this. Okay, so wow, that's really changed our, a whole look of what our outline looks like now. But no worries, we can change this. Quite simply, we can change the size of our columns by simply dragging them. This way we can get more on the screen. Very easy to do. Now the other thing is I, the synopsis here, um, we, maybe I don't prefer that there. I can drag it, pull it over here, and do a little rearranging that way. And let's say I want to make the title a little bit bigger. Um, and maybe I don't need the create date on here. So let's just open that and take that off. Okay. And here's our total word count. And I'm going to put that at the end. And I want to put our, we've got our target, our targets. Um, maybe we want the label here. And our status. And let's just, there, so there we go. We've done a little bit of rearranging and quite simply uh, made it more visually appealing to ourselves and to what we want to see in our outline. Next, we can also um, rearrange our files. So if we come here into view 
and outline. You can see where you can expand and collapse all. So let's expand them all. And so basically now that's taken our file and opened it up and it shows showing whatever scenes we may have within those chapters. Now you can drag and drop your various chapters. So perhaps I want to move um, this chapter here up here. Okay, it will drop it in there. The only restriction you have here, suppose I have this scene within here, I cannot drag it out and make it a chapter. You have to add a chapter in. So let's say I click where and click wherever you want to insert it. So let's just add it to the bottom here. And down here you'll see new folder. So there it's just added us a new folder. So um, we can uh, label that. And then if we wanted to add text to that, we click on here and that will submit um, another line for us to add perhaps a scene within within that chapter. You can click on, by double clicking any one of these, you can change the titles. You can also double click and change your synopsis from here. Um, you can change your targets. You can change your labels. You can also change uh, your status, okay, or your word counts. Um, obviously, um, your It'll change any of your targets or labels. Certain things like your progress, obviously, you can't change because uh, Scrivener is keeping track of that for you. So the a lot of functionality and a lot of flexibility comes with the outliner, just as it does with the cork board. Um, we can also um, change. We can go to our editor from here. So suppose this is your outline. And you, but you want to be able to now jump and do some writing. Um, but maybe you don't want to have the outline. You want to have it readily available, but not visible. So if we click on this here, this brings us to our editor. And I showed this to you in our last video. So here you could be typing away, writing your manuscript, and quite simply close it down and refer back to your outline. If you would prefer to see it in front of you at all times, then we can go to split screen. So let's uh, go up here and we're going to add back in our binder and our inspector. Okay, so now we've got our binder and our inspector and our split screen. And let's go to the split screen here and let's add our outliner up here again. Okay. I'll just hit draft there, and there we go. So now we can see our our um, our outline up top. We have our manuscript in the bottom. We have our binder here, and we have our synopsis inspector uh, to the right. So a lot of elements going on, and if you'd like to be able to see all those elements when you're writing your manuscript, there it is for you. But again. Um, as you saw on the previous screen, you can make it very simple. Just see the outline, just see the editor. There's, there's so many options. It just all depends on your preferences. So that's, in a nutshell, basically our outliner. And if that's a op wonderful option for you, if you're not a fan of the corkboard, it's a great way to outline and brainstorm and keep track of your manuscript for any of your family history projects. This has been Lynn Palermo from the Armchair Genealogist.